So you guys remember the pick and place wheel from last year? Well, I supersized it. Why? Simply because I want more slots. And in general, the wheel is just the kind of device that can always benefit from a size upgrade. For those of you that don't know what the pick and place wheel is, you can watch my previous video on the project. I'll link to it in the description or you can read the article to understand exactly what the pick and place wheel system is. Everything I talked about in that video also applies to this new wheel. The only difference is the size of the wheel and the accompanying slot counts. I'll do a detailed comparison between the wheels at the end of the video. So the previous wheel was designed to be 3D printed on a standard size 3D printer. So if you have a printer that can manage 200 by 200 millimeter build size, then you can make the first wheel. The new wheel is designed for large format 3D printers with a minimum build volume of 300 by 300 millimeters. I printed the new wheel on my 23 Sapphire Plus which is a great core XY 3D printer with the required build volume. Here you can see that the largest part of the new wheel takes up most of the build volume. The new wheel turned out significantly bigger with more than twice the surface area of the previous wheel. It's slightly taller too. Both wheels are designed to work in the exact same way though, so the electronics for the wheels are also very similar. Here you can see the PCB for the previous wheel next to the PCB for the new one and although the boards are not interchangeable between the wheels, the circuit on the boards are exactly the same. While we are on the topic of circuits and PCBs, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB. To get your PCBs professionally manufactured for as low as $2, head to jlcpcb.com and with their new affordable 3D printing service, JLCPCB now provides a one-stop shop for most of your electronics project needs. So check out jlcpcb.com and if you use the link jlcpcb.com slash DYE, you get an $18 coupon towards your first order. Thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. Having just assembled the wheel as you saw at the beginning of the video, the next thing I did was to assemble the board for the new wheel. I started by applying solder paste to the board. Not my best paste application, but it's good enough. I then transferred the pasted PCB to my pick and place wheel and proceeded with populating the components on the board. I found this part a bit poetic, knowing that this would likely be the last board I would assemble on this wheel.
I transferred the board to my crude but functional and very much a work in progress reflow hot plate. The board came out with a few solder bridges, but nothing too bad and nothing I couldn't fix with a soldering iron. After fixing the solder bridges, I uploaded a test firmware onto the board to make sure that all the sensors on the board were reading the poles on the magnets as they should. After the initial test, I made some minor changes to the pick and place wheel app to accommodate the higher slot count on the new wheel and I did some more testing on the wheel to make sure that the slots were encoded accurately. And when I was finally satisfied by the new wheel's operation, it was time to move my components over from the hold wheel. Now this part was a bit tricky. I wanted the new wheel to be a direct replacement for the hold one so that I can still use all the same pick and place wheel files that I used with the hold wheel. And the way to achieve that was to transfer the components to their matching slots on the new wheel so for example, if I had 10 kilo ohm resistors in slot 20 of wheel 1 from this wheel, I would transfer it to the same slot 20 on the new wheel. This way, I get to keep using all my already generated pick and place wheel files. The actual component transfer was not as straightforward though. I had to be extremely careful not to mix up the components or transfer them into the wrong slots. I connected two instances of the hub to both wheels to use it to keep track of the slot I was moving the components from and the slot I was moving the components to. And I also designed and 3D printed a little tool to help with the process. I did mess up the transfer a couple of times. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad and I eventually got all the components into the proper slots on the new wheel. And as you can see, I now have more slots to work with. With the new wheel now ready, I of course proceeded to making some new boards on it. And here you can immediately see one of the benefits of the bigger wheel. It's much easier to populate more boards at the same time because the default placing surface is much bigger. All the CAD files for this new wheel is linked in the description and you can of course buy the new pick and place wheel board from my Tinder store which I will also have linked in the description. Now before I end the video, I want to show you a detailed comparison between the former pick and place wheel and the new pick and place wheel XL so that you can make an informed decision as to which one might be best for you. So here you can see the main differences between the new and the hold wheel. So the slot counts on wheel 1 which is the outer wheel. For the original pick and place wheel, you have the 48 or 16 slot options. 
and then for the new bigger wheel you have the 72 or 24 slot options for wheel 2 which is the inner wheel for the original pick and place wheel you have 24 or 8 slot options and then for the new wheel you have 36 or 12 slots options now for the wheel i built in this video i used um the 72 and the 36 wheel options that's for wheel one and wheel two so if you've seen the previous video i made about the original pick and place wheel then you know you can combine um you can combine the slots in whichever way that suits your project so for the original pick and place wheel the maximum slot count you can have for the entire pick and place wheel is 48 plus 24 which is 72 that's in total and then for the new larger pick and place wheel the total number of slots you can have is 72 plus 36 which sums up to 108 slots and that's quite a bit more slots than the original pick and place wheels now for the placing surface sizes that's the surface where you place the pcbs for the original pick and place wheel you have the 68 millimeter or the 128 millimeter options and then for the newer bigger wheel you have the 120 millimeter or the 190 millimeter option now for the 3d printer requirements essentially if you're going to be making um the original pick and place wheel if you have a 3d printer that can manage 200 by 200 millimeter on the bed size then you're good to go and for the new larger pick and place wheel you need a large format 3d printer that's something that can manage um, a print volume of at least 300 by 300 millimeters and if you plan on making the bigger pick and place wheel and you only have a regular size 3d printer I'll also have the CAD files linked in the description so you can so you can go through it and see if you can slice it up and then print it on a smaller bed size. But in general, this is my recommendations for making either of the wheels. And finally, for the pick and place wheel board, as I mentioned earlier in this video, the boards are exactly the same in terms of components. So the price is also going to be the same and you can get the pick and place wheel board from my tinder store which i have linked in the description the only difference between the boards for the original pick and place wheel and the new larger pick and place wheel xl is the length of the board so you don't need to make your decision based on the price of the pick and place wheel board so there you have it guys that's the difference between the previous and the new pick and place wheel please watch the original pick and place wheel video because that will tell you everything you need to know about the pick and place wheel system and everything that applies to that video and the original pick and place wheel also applies to the new larger pick and place wheel XL. The only difference that I've mentioned earlier is the size and the IR slot counts that you get. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.